Welcome to the third and final day of Rally Sweden 2012. These frozen forest roads have tested the skill and endurance of both driver, mechanic and machine. And only the best survive to the third day. I'm Colin Clark and joining me from those frozen stages, Julian Porter. One of the Norwegians in the top ten, one of the four Norwegians, Jules, it's Henning Solberg. Yeah, he managed yesterday, for most of the day, to hold off Sebastian Loeb, but the Frenchman, he starts five seconds behind Henning. So let's see what he can do today. Yeah, back on the start line, Jules, he is the legend that is Sebastian Loeb. Monte Carlo winner is away from Les Fors. Jules, he suffered miserable luck so far this weekend. Yeah, it's been a real off weekend for Sebastian. It's just mistake after mistake, really, but he struggles, seems, he just seems to struggle on the snow and ice. Well, do you know what? If he's got an Achilles heel, Jules, snow and ice is the Achilles heel for Sebastian Loeb. Well, it is. I mean, the guy's like eight times world champion and uh, he just he's won once in Sweden, won, won once in Norway. But he's never seemed to really master anything else since that. No, we've seen some big accidents from him on the snow and ice in the past. Remember back in Norway a few years ago, he had a big off there, didn't he? I'd say, I mean, it's just so quick, though. It, it, it's a fine art, and you can see how the Scandinavians, they grew up on this. And uh, Loeb, you know, he, he is still the world's best, but just struggles on this surface. And he certainly struggled this weekend. Well, just ahead of Sebastian Loeb in fifth place, Evgeny Novikov. I think the Russian youngster has produced one of the finest performances in the WRC this weekend. And with a gap, Jules, of more than 44 seconds over Loeb, the M Sport Ford driver, he'll be confident of holding him off over the 80 kilometers in the final day. Well, that's it, Matt. Evgeny is saying that he really just wants to keep pushing as hard as he can. But it's so difficult. I mean, Denny Zirida having to rein this guy in. But Navikov, he's just so desperate to beat Loeb in this straight fight, running one behind each other on the road. It's a real test for Novikov to see him up against Lowe. And do you know what? Not many people would have given Novikov, Novikov a chance of getting this far, Jules. He really has shown tremendous consistency through the season so far. Yeah, really starting in GB last year with the Abu Dhabi drive, and then coming on, like in Monty, and then in Sweden. He's cleared the first stage of the day. Let's hear what he's got to say. Evgeny, you can smile now. You're asking what the time was quicker than Loeb. You make a gap on the world champion. Yeah, of course, as I already said yesterday, I never, I, 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 I uh, uh, don't let him uh, catch us today for sure. And uh, I will go flat out and uh, will try to keep my fifth position. There's no question. Fifth position or nothing for sure. Well, that's certainly a confident young man. But are the other end jewels of the experienced skill, Petter Solberg, the last driver to beat Loeb to a world championship. He's off the start line. Yeah, Petter's got a big fight on with another Norwegian. Matt Osberg, that's coming in in third at the moment. Osberg just 11 seconds behind him, but Petter needs to really push because Maz is saying he really wants to be the top Norwegian here. Well, absolutely, Mads Osberg with that second place last year. He's desperate for a podium again in this one. Well, that's it. He finished GP, the last rally he did with a podium. He wants to start his 2012 campaign with one. Absolutely, and it's the snow and ice of Sweden and Mads Osberg being from just across the border in Norway. It absolutely is Osberg's surface. That's it, but also it's Petters, and just look at the commitment through here. <laughs> Huge jump there. And Jules, that's Mads Osberg now. Tell you what, this kid is really up for the fight. He is desperate to catch Petter Solberg today. Yeah, Mads saying at the end of this stage that uh, he was pushing to the limit, and already the snowbanks he was wanting to use were missing from the cars in front. They've been whacking them. And he just was just fully committed. He said the narrow section in the middle was very tricky, though. Yeah, there's no doubting this young man's confidence. He certainly knows that he can do well on the surface. He knows he can push hard on this surface. It for sure is his favourite surface. Yeah, I mean, we saw this with Sweden last year as well. I mean, he was so close to winning the rally. And then just to keep it going. Jules, if we had six or seven rounds of the World Championship on snow and ice, he'd be a contender. For sure, yes. I, did, I think he was just so, so disappointed Friday afternoon. Well, it looks like Osberg's done all he can. He's thrown down the gauntlet to Solberg. It's up to Petter now and co-driver Chris Patterson. Just look at the commitment down here. 
Jump after jump. The speed they're getting is just incredible. Yeah, fantastic stuff from Solberg. He's slower though. Matt takes a bit of time out of him. Better first one of the morning. Just a little bit of time lost, so it's not too bad. No, no, it's not bad, but uh, I really like to. I was zero on the split. I lost everything at the at the end here, so just have to keep on pushing. That's it. Well, and now to the battle at the front, Jules. Miko Harvenen, he's got a decision to make today. How much does he push? How many risks does he take to try and catch Yari Mati Latvala in front of him? Does he stop pushing at some point and decide, well, I'm going to take the 18 points? Thank you very much. First stage in the morning, it's the one. Miko really wide there. The first stage in the morning is the one where you've got to really attack because you've got to throw the gauntlet down now. It's no point doing it stage two and three. He's got to be the first one to scare Yari Matti. Well, it's not just the first stage, it's the first split of the first stage he's looking for, really. He's got to have had his weeks of this morning then. Yeah, I actually spoke to him before he left service and he was very philosophical. He said, I'll give it a go, but if I don't get it, well, at the halfway point in the stage, if I'm not ahead, I might just settle for that second place. Well, it's interesting. I mean, he's grown though into this car amazingly. We saw this in Monte Carlo, the more and more he went in it. And here, he's been absolutely superb, really. Yeah, you'd have to say only his second event, as you say, Jules, in the DS3. It's a great performance for him so far this weekend, no matter what happens. I think it's a, a, a brilliant performance, and it's just good for him. He's obviously lost a little bit of his mojo at the end of last season. He's through the stage, let's hear what he's got to say. I was not not confident at all and had a couple of big slides and it was very slippy on another road, so uh, I took it steady. I didn't want to make a mistake when I didn't have a good feeling, so uh, unfortunately it went now this way, but uh, and I couldn't push. I didn't want to risk it all. Well, Miko's done all he can then. Back in the stage, it's now down to the rally leader to respond to the challenge. As they have for the whole weekend, Latvala and co-driver Mika Antila look completely composed in that fiesta. Just look at the concentration on Yari Mati's face in here. This is extremely high speed stuff on snow and ice. You can barely stand up on that surface. And the stop lines were sliding about all over the place. These guys are driving incredibly quickly on a surface we can't stand up on. But you know what? Latvala has looked comfortable, Jules, all weekend. He really hasn't looked stressed at all. I think we can take that back to Spain, to be fair. Since Spain, he's just relaxed. But what about after Monte? Do you think more pressure on him after Monte? He's certainly not showing that pressure. He's not showing that pressure. I, I don't know, this guy, this guy just seems to ooze confidence at the moment. And he seems, if he makes a mistake, he seems to just calm down and sort it out later. That Valle certainly knows how quick he is, and he's quick in this one. Yari, yeah, seeing that time go up there must be a big relief. Yeah, it uh, gives a bit more, a bit more relaxed feeling now. Also difficult stage. This is uh, the uh, middle section there, very narrow, twisty section was very, very tricky. I think people have gone a bit off the, off the road as well. There was lines going to the ditches and so on, but uh, me managed to do it quite, quite good. So I was pleased with that. So Latvala's lead up to more than half a minute then with Hervenen seeming to concede defeat already. The battle for third continues to build, however, Osberg is now just 9.4 seconds behind Peter Solberg. Well, it's been a great start to the final day for Yari Mati Latvala. Can he hold on for the win? Find out after the short break. Welcome back to Rally Sweden. We still have five stages to run here in the frozen forest, including the bonus points power stage. Yari Mati Latvala is still the man to beat, but that fight for third just keeps getting closer. Well, Evgeny Novikov really has impressed this weekend in a solid fifth place, but the Russian youngster needs to show his maturity now. He is Sebastian Loeb's next target. No huge dramas, though. Now, Evgeny holds a 45-second advantage over the world champion, but he is slower through this stage. It's not going to bother him too much, though, is it? It's he just got to keep the concentration as long as he can just if he does lose time he just wants to be just a little bit each time he doesn't want to give Sebastian Loeb a chance because if Sebastian Loeb has half a chance he will grab it 
Well, Miko Havlin in second place is beginning to run out of time as if, if he is to win this battle of psychological warfare with his former teammate. He needs to push hard and pile on the pressure, but Miko looks to be taking no risks out there. And there are still some incredibly fast sections on this final morning, so he can't back off completely. Breathtaking stuff from the Citroen man here. Here, Miko breaking up and down the gears. It's just incredible, the commitment. And I tell you what, that helicopter shot, Jules, is one of the best we're going to see in the WRC this year. It's amazing how much these drivers love driving on these conditions. You would think it would be so bad and they wouldn't want to do it, but they just absolutely love it. It's a beautiful section, that Jules. I think I've driven that section before, not quite as quickly as this, though. I wouldn't have thought so. Miko just still, not, he's not using all of the road though. As if he's just kind of maybe in a conservative tyre approach or something, but on the last day you can't be conservative, you've got to go for it. Well, despite these speeds, Miko seems to be accepting the defeat this morning, and this is the man he is conceding it to, Yari Mati Latvala, looking for a clean run through. Yeah, we've seen Yari Mati in the past. The Finnish to come to pressure on final days of rallies before. The biggest and most notable one, Poland. That was just incredible, that final stage. But Gary, still on it, still as calm as anything. Just look at it in there. It is a Sunday drive, but not like the normal one. No, it's been a, an incredible performance this weekend so far from Yari Mati Latvala. Most of our other drivers have struggled in some form or another this weekend. Latvala hasn't struggled at all. He had that wonderful battle on the first day, didn't he, with Miko Harvland. They traded times, they traded the lead, but he's not let it phase him. He's not pushed on too hard. He's made no mistakes, Julian. He hasn't. Let's just listen to Mika Ansela as he encourages Yari Mati through this stage. You can see just how good those conditions are out there this morning as well. Jules, good ice face there. It is a good ice face. And just watch the lines from this helicopter shot of here. The snaking road through Sweden. Just look at that. You can hear the car just struggling for traction every single corner. The studs scrabbling for grip in the ice. He's on to the straight. The momentum will now build up as you can get some grip and some traction. He's coming towards the end of the stage here, obviously the time of Hervenen up there. Can Yari take a little bit more and just consolidate that, vic that victory or that lead for the potential victory? Four point seven quicker. He's going to be happy with that one, that's for sure. I think he's got to be happy with that. He has pushed on ahead of Miko Hervenen. That's a heck of a battle, but there's, however, a battle raging behind Mads Osberg. Got off to a flyer this morning, closing in on Peter Solberg to try to take back the third place from his fellow Norwegian. Yeah, Mads has been struggling with setup problems during the weekend. But he does look quick here this morning, and look at his commitment in this bumpy section. You can hear the car drifting and dipping and diving. Peter Solberg now, Jules, he needs to dig deep. A lot of state for the Norwegian Petter. He's had a podium in Monty. He wants another one here in Sweden. He's got a real young gun challenging him and hunting him down. I think it's a matter of his pride as well. He really does not want to be beaten by Osberg here. Doesn't want to be beaten by anybody, not just Osberg. He's through the final corner. Here we go. Mads has done him again. That's what Petter <laughs> thought of that. <laughs> OK, with Yari Mati Latvala extending his lead at the top, surely he can now cruise to victory this afternoon. But just look at the battle between Osberg and Solberg for third place, separated by just 4.9 seconds. Well, Matt's just 4.9 seconds behind Petter Solberg. Can you do it? Get that podium finish. Yeah, of course. It's. Uh, I mean, it was 11 seconds this morning and now it's it's uh, just uh, yeah, just over four seconds. So I think it's definitely possible. Uh, we will push as hard as we can, and uh, I will take uh, just do the same speed as I've done now. I can to I can do a bit more uh, risks on the on the high speed. Do you think you can hold Mats behind you? It's just 4.9 seconds. Well, 
it will be hard for sure. You know, he has taken me on every stage this morning, and he took everybody now with uh, two seconds on the last stage. So we really have to push on. I tell you, really hard. Yeah, it's, it's looking looking more, a little bit more relaxed now. But now the case is to try to keep the uh, concentration on. Uh, I know Mikko. Mikko is probably in a situation he wants to save his tires in the afternoon for the power stage and try to get some extra points. So I don't think he's going to attack anymore, but that's the case. Now you really need to focus to, to keep the keep your concentration on. We'll back out for the afternoon loop then. And with the stages already fairly rough in the first pass, there's real concern this afternoon about the conditions of the road. Then it's Allberg and Mads Osberg still locked in the battle for the final podium position. Yeah, Ted is giving it everything in here. Oh, dear me. That it, it, he's got a problem, he's all over the place. There's a puncture front right puncture. Tell you what, that's not good. It's near the end of the stage, but Petter's going to struggle with that. I tell you, that could be the podium gone. Petter, obviously, we saw the splits getting slower and slower. We can see what's happened. Did you clip anything? It's just a lot of rocks out there, and, and that's it. Touched one, and then that's it. So, okay. ah, very disappointed. Well, that's a real shame. The closest battle on the leaderboard could have been decided by a rock in the road. Rally leader Latvan now seems to have this result under control. I'll tell you what, there was a big impact in there as well. And, and another one. And, and look, he's got a puncture as well. It's the same place. He's going to struggle here to keep hold of this lead. Let's see what he's done. a rock I've never ever seen on this stage. It just had. A come to the to the ruts on the big wide road and never ever seen this rock and uh, I just felt it when it hit it and uh, that's that's the way it is so now I need to push in Raman. It's all very close again now. Yeah it's close again man so but let's see uh, should be should be quite okay still. Well a dramatic final afternoon then Latvala will get that wheel changed he now holds a lead of just over eight seconds. And after hunting down Ben Solberg for the last day and a half, third place has now been handed on a plate to Mads Osberg. The Norwegian, 24 seconds ahead of Petter, going into the final stage. And this has become a crucial stretch of road for Citroën's flying Finn, Nico Hervinen, with his chances of hunting down the leader all but over. Suddenly, he's been handed a lifeline. The two-time Sweden winner can sense there's a chance of a third victory on this incredible event, and he's on a mission out there in stage 23. It, it was tricky, you know, there's so much stones and, and gravel on that stage that, you know, my front tyres, they do feel quite bad already. But, um, you know, we'll see. I had a good time, you know. I was happy with the car again, so it was, I was enjoying. Well, that puncture must have rattled Yari Matti, but this has been an inspired response from the rally leader with his lead slashed to just over eight seconds. He has to give it everything. The early split times have looked promising for Latvala. As he bears down towards the finish, he's through there. He's quicker again, he's four and a half up. The advantage is way back in his, now, in his game now. Yeah, so Latvala has pulled his lead back to 12.9 seconds. That could be crucial with only one stage remaining. Late heartbreak for Perez Solberg. With the end in sight, the Ford man slips out of the podium positions. Power stage still to come, but before we see who picks up those bonus points, let's round up what happened today in the Super 2000 Support Series for cars with normally aspirated 2-litre engines. And what a weekend it's been for Per Gunnar Andersen. The local star has dominated from start to finish on his home event after building up a huge advantage in the first two days. You know, Jules Proton's first victory in the SWRC as well. And Craig Breen, Jules, he's had a good weekend, another good result for him. Yeah, Craig's proving a wise head on young shoulders. He stayed out of trouble to bring his fourth Fiesta home in second. Pontius Tiedemann, he was the wild card here. Good weekend for him. Third place, a podium on his debut. And not registered in the SWRC, but actually the highest S2000 finisher was Sebastian Ogier. Proton's PG Anderson claims the SWRC win. It's fantastic. It's, we're so happy for the team as well. It's been working hard now for many seasons without any really 
good results and now we can uh, show on our home on my home ground uh, how the strong the car is and uh, that I, I'm still a capable driver. So Anderson's winning margin more than three and a half minutes over Breen. Tiedman finishes just over a minute behind and Hayden Padden comes through a difficult weekend to claim fourth. In the championship standings, Breen's second place and his Monte Carlo win sees him take an early lead. Anderson slots into second after his Sweden success. So to the final challenge of this dramatic weekend, the 4.6 kilometre blast around the Hag Forest power stage. Bonus points run off of the top three finishers and it's a tricky finale through a twisty, undulating ski run. And Jules, Sebastian Loeb in a bit of a miserable weekend by his high standards. Yeah, there's been a number of costly incidents that put pay to any hopes of Seb adding to a champion. What a jump over there. I tell you what, he is pushing. He's not going to get many points in the actual rally, but he wants three in this final power stage. Well, he did that last year, didn't he, on a number of rallies, picking up the power stage, maximum points. Be crucial come the end of the year. So he's through the stage with some effort, I tell you, it was some time. And Mad Zosberg, Jules, that's his second podium of his career. Great effort, actually. It's his third podium of his career. A great effort this weekend from Osberg. Yeah, he's going to look committed in here. You wonder whether he's going to take the gamble, but it's a big push still from Mads in here. I'll tell you what, he's, he's so mature now. He's just gained, he's lost that angry Mad Zosberg situation. He's now super cool and calm. Yeah, happy Mad Zosberg there. Well, having held on to third place for so long, Peter Solberg, he'll be a frustrated man inside that Fiesta. Yeah, a couple of stages back, a puncture ended his chances of a podium. And he's had another slow puncture in the power stage as well, so that might just hinder him from winning the power stage. 4.9 down on Loeb, a slow puncture in the front left. So just the rally leader to come now, and what a performance it has been this weekend from Yari Mati Latvala. Yeah, Ford's number one survived that late puncture. It was a scare, and wow, he won't risk anything to sacrifice his sixth career victory. He's still not going to take the power stage. He wants the 25 points. There's no need to gamble those extra three. That's him through the finish. He's gone for the victory rather than the power stage points. Great stuff from Yari Mati Latvala. <laughs> Peter Solberg congratulating you. It's a big team effort now. Big happy family of Ford. It means a lot to them, it really does. So a really hard fought win, but Latvala was the victor by a margin of 16.6 seconds. The first time when I won this, it was back in 2008, and I became the youngest ever winner uh, World Championship Rally. And I, at that time, I was beating my idol Henry Toivonen's record. So it's fantastic to win uh, win a rally again, and it's my first time when I w win the same rally two times. Well, a really hard-fought win, but Latvala was the victor by a margin of 16.6 seconds over his former teammate Hervonen. Osberg claims third place with Peter Solberg having to settle for fourth after his late puncture. And here's how the results translate into points. Latvala getting a total of 26, and Loeb's power stage win brings him some consolation from a disappointing weekend. been great sport I mean I think those two guys have been having such a wide up I think Yari uh, couldn't believe that Miko could be like he was because obviously they've been teammates for so long but uh, no it's been uh, it's been good sport and uh, they've you know we knew that Miko would be the, the, the guy to beat here and uh, it's proved to be the case but I'm pleased to see that Yari's come out on top it's been really great and I, I really enjoyed it even though you know he beat me this time but it's been fantastic really great atmosphere and uh, and uh, you know he's he's growing up as well, getting older and more consistent. So it's not so easy to wind him up and get him nervous. But uh, there's more rallies to come in. But you know it's not too bad. First and second for Finland, so uh, it's not, it's good. So in the drivers' championship standing, Sebastian Loeb's lead leads. He is seven points ahead of his Citroen teammate Hervonen with Peter Solberg the leading forward in third. Latvala's win marks his first points of the year after his Monte Carlo crash. In the manufacturer's competition, Citroen Total are up front on 65 points, but Ford are already hunting them down. It's a hard fought win for Latvala and co-driver Mika Antler. They get their celebration started on the Karlstad finish podium. It's definitely got their season up and running. 
and the championship has burst into life in Sweden. So in just a few weeks' time, the WRC circus ships off to warmer climbs and the North American continent for Rally Mexico. A fiesta atmosphere and rough, tough gravel stages, it's not to be missed. It's been a sensational weekend in frozen Scandinavia. We hope you've enjoyed all the drama. We'll leave you with the best of the action from round two. And from us all here in Sweden, it's goodbye.